I like to use custom key commands inside of Logic, generally to make things easier and help my workflow be more efficient. I'm gonna share some of those with you today, but first, let's look at how to create custom key commands. So let's open up key commands. And now in the search bar, I'm gonna type in audio. What I really want is open audio settings. So I'm gonna to go to learn by key label, and right here, I'm gonna type in command option comma. And that's my new key command for open audio settings. So instead of going up here with my mouse, going to Logic Pro, settings, and going to audio, now I can just type in command option comma and it will take me there immediately. The rest of these key commands are ones that I've already developed and I find useful and I think you'll find them useful too. So let's start going through them. Here's one, command option control T. This opens up the toolbar. Now I use this combination a lot, command option control and a letter or a number. It's easy to make these work. Logic hasn't made a habit of using them. And it's also easy to place your fingers on these keys quickly. They're just easy to find. The next one is very similar. It's command option control comma. This opens up the plugin manager. You can go here to check for failed plugins, see what plugins you have, and also place them in folders. This one has to do with a pet peeve of mine. When you start Logic, it comes up with the default snap regions to relative value. I think it should be snap regions to absolute value. So what I've done is develop a key command to get me there quickly. It's command option control G. And then if you check here, it's now at snap regions to absolute value. If you wanna go back to relative value, you can use command control G. And now we're back at snap regions to relative value. So I can go back and forth using these two key commands. Sometimes I wanna check the level, the actual recorded level of a loop or something that I've recorded into the track rather than what my fader level is telling me. To do that, you wanna check pre-fader metering. So key command that I've used is command control P. And that turns on pre-fader metering, which allows me to see what level the loop was originally recorded at. Is it too hot? And should I make adjustments with the gain? This next behavior, I find I have to adjust depending on what I'm doing inside of Logic. And that has to do with catch playhead position. So right now, if I hit the space bar, the screen did not follow the playhead, it's off screen. So if I want it to follow the playhead, then what I use is a key command, command option, control H. And now when I hit the space bar, it's following me. This can be really useful because if you're doing some editing, you may not want the playhead to be followed. You may not want the screen to move. And at other times when you're just playing along through long sections of the track, you do want to see this. So this key command helps you be a little bit more efficient, helps things be a little bit more easy. I color my tracks and regions in Logic to give myself more visual cues as to what I'm looking at. Now the standard procedure is click on your track, control click, assign track color. I would rather use command option control C and then pick the color that I want for this particular track. Another key command that's somewhat similar is naming the tracks. So I could go to this region right here, do a control click and go into my contextual menu and rename this region. I'd rather use a key command and what I've developed is option shift N 
and it names the region the same as the track. I find that to be the most convenient thing for me. Option Shift N. The next two key commands have to do with quantization. So I'm going to click on this region right here and it's not quantized right now. If I want to quantize it, I have a key command, command option eight, and that gives me quantize by eighth notes or command option six will do 16th notes. These are the two I use the most frequently. So I have two key commands to get that done quickly. This next key command has to do with editing. If I want to separate all these hits from each other, if I want to slice it transients, maybe I want to put them on another track or put it into a sampler, well, here's a key command. Command Option Shift T is the one that I've developed for that. And then it slices at the transients and I can do whatever I need to do with them. This region also has fades at the beginning and at the end. Occasionally, I want to get rid of all of them. So I've got a quick one for that. Command, Option, Control, Zero. And I've eliminated the fades at the front and the back end or any fades on that region. For a long time now, I think we've had the key command, Command, Option, One, to give us a MIDI region. But when we got a sequencer or patterns, we didn't get a key command to give us a pattern region. So here's mine, command option three, and that gives us a pattern region. So command option three or command option one for a MIDI region. When you call up a preset from Logic, sometimes it comes with a lot of plugins and maybe you don't want them. So rather than go through each one and delete them, using a key command is probably going to be a whole lot faster. So what I've got is command option and the delete key on an extended keyboard. And now all the plugins are gone. So that's a quick and easy way to get rid of all the plugins on a track. For the next couple key commands, we need to open up the piano roll. So looking at these MIDI notes, we can see there's a lot of space there that we're not using. If we want to get rid of that, we can collapse the piano roll. Command Option Control C. And that just allows us to focus on the MIDI notes that we have. Now you may have noticed I've used Command Option Control C up here for coloring the tracks. But once I go down into the piano roll, I can use the same one. Command Option Control C. And now I've got my space back. Another time-saving key command in the piano roll is force legato. So if I want these notes to go all the way up to the note after it, I can use a key command. Command option two. And that'll force legato whatever notes I have. In other words, they're long enough to go right up to the next note. This next custom key command involves using a ruler that many folks don't even know about. So if we go up to view, we can go down here and select the marquee ruler. That's a little bit of effort, so I'd rather have a custom key command, Option, Control, Shift, M, and that gives me the marquee ruler. So now what can I do with the marquee ruler? Well, I can drag across the ruler and select all the tracks underneath it. I'll copy it. And then I'll go to another place in my track and paste it. So it allows me to quickly copy and paste an entire section somewhere else in my project. Hopefully you'll find some of these custom key commands useful. And just to review how to create custom key commands, open up key commands, type into the search bar some relevant terms, Select the key command, and then using Learn by Key Label, type in the key command that you'd like to create.